Ohio State uh, wishes, well, I guess they're back to being a football school at this point because this team <laughs> blows pure and power. Uh, I don't know what happened to Chris Altman, man. I, I just, the guy's just. I don't know if recruiting or what's going on, but it just ain't working at Ohio State. They welcome in Illinois. Uh, I don't want to say must win because pretty much you can stick a fork in them. They got NIT written all over them. But what are you doing here tonight with Ohio State in Illinois? Well, Joe, you offered up such a wonderful introduction for the breakdown I was about to do. Uh, what I'm going to do first here is reference yesterday's big game breakdown and hope everyone forgets everything you just said. Uh, I do legitimately <laughs> want to reference uh, yesterday's big game breakdown, which was Texas Tech TCU. Just so everyone's on the same page here, I talked about how that was set to be another instance of an unranked uh, home favorite against a top 25 team. Well, guess what? TCU is now in the poll uh, since we did mm -hmm. that show yesterday, number 25. I did a new breakdown for that game that people can check out elsewhere here on Wager Talk TV. You know where to go. Uh, complete break. I still like the Horned Frogs, to be honest. But let's talk about uh, Illinois at Ohio State. And despite Joe Ranieri's rousing endorsement of the Buckeyes, I think this is a good buy low spot here on OSU. Now, there is no disputing the fact, since the start of Big Ten play, Joe, it's gone poorly for the Buckeyes. Three and six straight up, one and eight ATS. They even lost to rival Michigan on MLK Day. Uh, Michigan really in the toilet, obviously. I mean, talk about footballs. I mean, Ohio State, Michigan, I just wish they could go back to uh, November, I suppose, and the football field. But the good news for Ohio State, they're back in Columbus tonight, and they're a much better team at home this year, nine and two. Only losses were to AM and Wisconsin, both of whom were ranked at the time. Wisconsin still ranked. Illinois, obviously ranked coming into tonight, number 14 in the country. I think that's a fair ranking for the fighting Illini. But let's talk about Illinois' last game, shall we? They only beat Indiana by eight. They were a 15-point favorite. And really an unimpressive performance when you consider Indiana was 0 for 9 from three. They did not make a single three over 40 minutes. They were also missing Ware, who's their second leading scorer and top rebounder. And the largest margin uh, that they uh, that they had, Illinois, was eight, which was the final margin. So for them to let Indiana hang around, you know, missing a key piece, not being able to hit a three, it's not really impressive. Now, we need to talk about Terrence Shannon Jr. Obviously, uh, he had the suspension, but he's been back the last three games, and he's not shot it well at all. Nine of 28 from the field, one of 14 from three, over half of his points have come from the foul line. So if Ohio State can defend with Shannon without fouling, I think they're in good shape. Illinois, just two and three straight up in true road games, Joe. They lose at Northwestern last Wednesday. Obviously, Ohio State's game against Northwestern, the less said, the better. It was an absolute atrocity. They were down by, I believe, as much as 35. But again, they're a much better team at home. And the key here for Ohio State, I'll say this, Joe, Getting to 70 points. They're 12 and 1 straight up this year when doing so. Away from home, neutral site, road games. How much does Illinois give up? How about 79.7 per game? I would take the points here if I was playing this Big Ten clash.